Hey there, this is uh, Dave White, and I'm with one of my favorite weight loss, feel better, body healing, fitness, nutrition coaches, Vinny Russo. Vinny, welcome. Thank you, Dave. Thanks for having me once again. Hey, always good to be with you. Hey, you have some stuff for us today. A lot of, there's a lot of plans out there and a lot of stuff, but you're not a cookie cutter guy. You like to personalize nutrition, caloric intake, and plans for people that, really, that are really customized. So today I want to ask a couple questions that might be helpful for us. And one of them is, how do you figure out caloric intake for people? Is it kind of just the same, or how do you, how do you get there? Oh, well, initially, you know, I use an equation where it takes into account their height, their weight, and their age, and it basically gives me the uh, BMR, their basal metabolic rate. And that, in simplistic terms, is just, you know, the calories that they need to survive if their body was at complete rest. So after I get that number, I take into their account their activity level, which is basically, are you sitting at a desk all day? Are you a construction worker? Are you a professional athlete? So that gets put in. And then I use my better judgment and look at the overall body type. And I adjust the calories and the macros based on how the individual looks and their particular lifestyle. So usually when I figure out this number, I kind of add some more calories. So when I start off, um, I like to start off with a higher caloric intake than normal. Um, usually one of my main disputes that I get from clients is that they usually can't finish their food and they question my methods. They're saying, you know, if my goal is to lose body fat and to lose weight, how can I do this while I'm eating so much? And I just tell them, you know, trust the process, trust the process. But my reasoning is to, you know, let their bodies become acclimated or get used to that caloric intake. So then when I go to manipulate and cut some calories, it actually leaves me some room to play with. So if I start off too low, I'm going to have nowhere to cut from. And this is once again, why I require a minimum of three months to start up with me because, you know, uh, that first month is really just to get your body acclimated to the caloric intake and the foods that you're eating. And then, you know, the second and third months is where, where we start seeing that progress with the manipulations. Yeah. Your clients have such transformation. I mean, the results are to speak for themselves. It's always very, very inspiring. And I love how you kind of integrate height and weight and age and activity as you come up with your calorie count. All that seems relevant, right? Yeah. I mean, there's a thousand ways to figure out calories. I mean, they're all over the internet, but the thing is, is that I use my judgment. So what I see and I trust myself and a client trusts me to make the right decisions. And that's kind of how, you know, it's not just an equation that spits out a number. Yeah. How does body type relate to like carbohydrates and proteins and fats and what's the relationship between those and how do you figure out which ones you put calorie numbers to and which ones you don't? Yeah, that's a perfect question. I mean, um, this once again, it's off my judgment. Um, I look at their body type and I figure out, I, I don't figure out, but I guess you could say um, their overall metabolism. So you have your endomorphs which are like larger bone structures. They have higher amounts of total body mass. They're higher in fat. Um, you got to think of like a power lifter. And what I do with them is like a football player or something. Yeah, like an offensive lineman, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I usually start them off with um, higher in fats, uh, moderate to high protein, and a little bit lower carb. Um, with the mesomorphs, those are more like your gymnasts. They're the medium-sized bone structure. They have very athletic bodies, and they can hold a lot of lean mass, and they're pretty muscular. And their ratios are pretty equal. I mean, it ranges from like 40% carbohydrates, 40% proteins, 20% fats. You can go higher in the carbs or if you want. But, you know, it's pretty equal all around. Um, then you have those ectomorphs. And they're smaller in bone structure. They're thinner limbs. You got to think of like people like an endurance athlete. And I usually start them off with a higher carb intake. Um, proteins moderate to high and their fat intake is a little bit lower. But this is all going to be based off their goals as well. So if we have an ectomorph who wants to gain some some weight you know that fat intake isn't going to be so low hmm. percentages yeah. get adjusted accordingly yeah now carbohydrates proteins and fats those are what we call my, macronutrients yeah those are macronutrients macro means large nutrients are you know basically how they're categorized so it's what your body needs in large amounts so is there like a formula that people can count on to know what macronutrients at what time to do or again how is that customized for you well, um, I mean, ex explain the question. I'm not, I'm not sure what you're saying. Well, I'm wondering how you personalize the percentages, you know, because you can do reading and there's a lot of stuff out there. But these macronutrients, like how do you figure that out and how do you work with those percentages? And 
Okay. Well, it, you know, like I said, it, it's all based off of, of my judgment. Um, it becomes individualized. Like I could give you the same uh, macronutrients, the same caloric intake as another person, but it becomes individualized when I start to manipulate the diet. So my judgment give you that initial caloric intake, you know, with my equation that I'd use. And then those manipulations that it makes through the diet is where it becomes individualized because I'm doing it off how you as the client, how you respond to the food intake and to the caloric intake. So everyone is going to respond differently. They have different hormones. Well, not different hormones, but different um, hormones being released at different times. The foods affect them differently, things like that. So it's all going to be individualized when I see how you respond. Hmm. That seems like the big advantage of someone hiring a coach, right? Is you can read something and go, I'm going to just go ahead and do this, but there's no way to self-correct or no way to manipulate or change or adjust as you're going. When you have a coach like you, you can start to see the pounds, the calories, the adjustments, the feeling level, the energy level, and make those personalized adjustments to really help them. Yeah. And it holds them accountable as well. So I mean, that's, that's what you hire a coach for, not just to give you uh, what you should be doing, but to, to guide you along a path, you know, to, to help you reach your goal that, that you're striving for, um, to, to be that light to guide you down there, you know. And, and that's one of the main things. It's like you get these coaches that just spit out diets that are all the same to people, and it gives online coaches a, a, bad, a bad rep because they feel like online coaches are all the same. But it's, it's really not online coaches. The reason why I like it is because, you know what, I could reach a lot more people that way. If I just stuck to New Jersey and New York where I'm at, I can't reach as many people. But me being online with the technology we have today, with Zoom meetings, with Skype, I could reach multiple you know, clients that in Wisconsin, in Europe, wherever it is, and I could affect their life in a positive way. Yeah. Now, if you're not going to give a cookie cutter solution to everyone, but you're going to personalize it, do you have to limit the number of clients you can take? Well, that's exactly why. So uh, right now I do have a limit for myself. Um, I limit it just because I feel like if I take on too much at once, I won't be able to handle it. And that's not fair to the client, especially that they're paying me for, for my services. And if I can't commit 100% to that specific client, to each client, then I won't do it. You know, So I limit myself there. Oh, that's great. Do you have a closing thought for us? I, I, I always learn a lot when I'm with you. Thank you. No, just, you know what, um, if you're going to find a coach, um, do your research on them, okay? See if they're time tested, talk to people, talk to their ex-clients, talk to their new clients, um, just kind of get a vibe about them. Talk to them personally and see where you can go from there. Um, but other than that, make sure that everything's individualized, customized to you, that they care about you, and that they're not driving you into the ground with training, with cardio, and they're not cutting calories um, in excessive amounts because they just want you to, you know, get this quick fix. So make sure the coach really cares about you. That's, that's the main thing here. That's awesome. Hey, thanks, Vinny. If you're looking to, to lose some weight, maybe build some muscle, you want to feel better, you want your body to heal, you're looking for fitness and nutrition advice, Vinny's my guy. His website's VinnyRusso.com. I love going there. There's lots of goodies for you to get. Vinny, thanks for your time today. Thanks, you, Dave. Appreciate it.